Hey guys, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel today. This is kind of a bit of a vlog video sort of thing. I wanted to share about a recent incident that happened, as well as some plans kind of going forward. I'm trying to get more videos out lately, I'm shooting for doing at least two or three per month. It's kind of hard to do that with a full-time job, but now with being laid off because of COVID and all of that, it's been a little bit easier. So I've been able to really um, do more with the channel. I've really just dove in into modding and repair and electronics repair in general. And I've just, I've pretty much gone full send on the channel. Anyways, you guys may recall from a few weeks ago when I released my Game Boy Cart Save Battery Replacement Tutorial, my updated one. Um, I actually released it at noon on a Friday and then I pulled it down a few hours later. Then shortly after that, I ended up putting it back up, but I revised part of it. Now I just want to say that I mostly did this new updated tutorial for myself because I want to get away from the old bad techniques that I showed off in my original tutorial from like almost two years ago, which somehow is almost to 100,000 views. Never thought what it would have gotten there just because it's a battery replacement tutorial. There's millions of those videos out. Well, not millions. You get the point. It's a pretty simple thing. All that to say, when I released this new updated tutorial, the first version of it, I made a kind of stupid mistake in it. And rather than tell you about it, I first just want to show you the original cut that was in the first edit of the video. So let's take a look. The battery in this cartridge is a tabbed CR1616 cell, so I've got a new one of the same size to replace it with. At this point, during my testing, I was a little surprised to find that after 20 years, this battery wasn't actually dead. It still put out about 3 volts. However, it seems that the welds on the tab on the back side of the cell, the positive side, had come loose. As you can see me tapping it to force the circuit closed here with the probes from my multimeter. Still though, we should replace this battery anyways, since we can't re-weld the tab to it. To start, put some flux on the contacts. This removes surface oxidation and promotes wetting of the solder. Once that's applied, grab the battery with a pair of tweezers and melt the solder on the first tab. You may have to add some more solder to these contacts in order to get them to melt properly. This process will probably go a bit differently for you, since one of the tabs on my battery isn't connected anymore, which ultimately makes this a bit easier. Now just do the same thing on the other tab on the board and pull the old battery away. So did you catch it? The untrained eye might not, but some people saw it and grilled me in the comments for it. Basically, I shorted the save battery with a pair of metal tweezers. Now in like a week and a half worth of editing this video and dressing it up and making it all look nice and everything, I never once caught that issue at all. I never once thought twice about it. I, out of bad habit, that slipped into the video. So I use my iFixit toolkit on the channel here all the time. You see it in a lot of my tutorials. It is a staple here on my workbench. It's got some metal tweezers in it, uh, a couple pairs that I use pretty regularly when soldering and repairing things. And so I actually have quite a few pairs of those that I just use and swap in and out um, from my workbench just to use for various applications and whatnot. I've just gotten so used to using them uh, that I haven't really used any other kind of tweezers. I just kind of use them for everything. I felt really defeated because after all, I was trying to demonstrate the proper way to do this thing. Something so easy. It's like the most basic thing you can do when starting out soldering, but there's all kinds of ways to do it. And then there's the right way to do it. And I messed that one little detail up. So to try to fix the issue, I wrote and pinned a comment to the top of my video, basically saying, look, there's this problem. I know about it. I understand. It's not good technique. Now, it won't really damage your cartridge. And some people were making a really big stink about that. In reality, when you're dealing with these kinds of voltages and this much current, you're not going to really hurt anything. At most, shorting the save battery on your Game Boy cartridge 
is only going to blank the save, which we're pretty much doing anyways by using this technique. Now there are ways to jump a new battery to the cartridge by soldering to alternate points and so that you can put a new one in place and it's not going to hurt anything. You basically put a battery in parallel to the other one so that there's still a supply to save your save data on that cartridge. Now, you can also back up your save using a Joey. Uh, I talked about the Benven Joey in some other uh, videos and stuff, but there's all sorts of ways to preserve your save. I kind of leave it up to people to decide on their own what they want to do, but that's the gist of it. I just want to show the soldering process. Anyways, people hated on that comment too, and so I decided to pull the whole video down and redo part of it as quick as I could, but still making it look nice. And plus, I didn't want the video to forever be about that one specific oversight. I want people to get the information they need out of it and not have to worry, is there any bad info in it? I'm really trying to put good information and show good technique in my videos. And um, as you can see, comparing my current, my recent videos to older ones from a year or two ago, you'll see that my technique has definitely improved and overall quality of the content on my channel has improved. That's the first time I've ever had to pull a video down. I guess that's just, there's a first time for everything. So anyways, I really quickly rewrote that part of the script. Um, grabbed uh, some tools and set up my workspace, refilmed it, recorded new audio commentary, um, edited and spliced it all into the video and then re-rendered it uh, once or twice to make sure I got all the kinks out. That's probably the quickest that I've ever done that much content and released it back out in a video. So I re-released the video that same night and here is the result, the fixed clip. The battery in this cartridge is a tabbed CR1616 cell, so I've got a new one of the same size to replace it with. When testing these batteries, the minimum voltage that the SRAM on these cartridges can retain your data at is about 2 volts. So be sure first that your battery is actually low or dead. For example, this one is fine. But the one here has a bit of a strange issue, where it was acting like it was dead and not retaining save data. But in reality, the weld on the positive tab on the back side of the cell broke loose. So since we can't re-weld it to the battery, we'll need to replace the entire thing anyways. To start, put some flux on the two contacts. This will remove surface oxidation and promote wetting of the solder. Once that's applied, grab the battery with a pair of plastic tweezers or a plastic spudger, and melt the solder on the first tab while pulling upward. You may have to add some more solder to these contacts in order to get them to melt properly. Then just do the same thing to the other tab on the board, and pull the old battery away. I got frustrated when refilming this that night because these are the only plastic tipped tweezers that I had. You have to squeeze to open them, and basically it works completely different from the normal electronic tweezers where you squeeze to close them. It's these are really a pain to work with. They're only really for picking up small objects that you don't want to put too much force on so that they slip out and go flying somewhere. Um, it's They're just for a very specific use, and I just had to make do with these that night. Now, some could argue that I could have put tape around the ends here, and it would have been just fine. But you guys know that I don't roll that way, and you know that I want to do things looking somewhat professional. So basically, I made it work with what I had, and I used the plastic tip tweezers for now, and I made it look as professional as I could. But then I went on eBay, and I bought a set of eight plastic tweezers here. Uh, now these are made of a, let me look at my outline, carbon fiber composite plastic. Um, they're about $7 on, on eBay, $7 US. Uh, I think it was like $7.50 or just shy of like $7.50. The listing says that they're resistant to high temperatures and um, mainly they're used for like jewelry and other things like that. I figured they're plastic tweezers, you can use them for soldering too, more or less. 
So I fiddled with my soldering iron a little bit to see what the melting point of this carbon fiber composite plastic, that's a tongue twister, carbon fiber composite plastic. I tried to see what the melting point of that was and um, I arrived at the number of about 340 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So I will still use my metal tweezers for most soldering applications and other tutorials and whatnot, but at least I now have a set of plastic tweezers to use whenever I need them. At any rate, I've put a link in the description below for you guys to check out these tweezers and buy a set for yourself so that you can avoid making the same mistake that I did. Thank you guys all again for watching and keep an eye out on the channel for in the next week or so because I've got a brand new tutorial coming out showing how to replace the save batteries in Game Boy Advance cartridges. A lot of people have asked about this process for a really long time and so I feel like I'm kind of obligated to at least touch on this topic and show how to do it just so that once and for all I can finally get away from these simple videos and show some more complex things. I really just want to get this kind of video work done and over with, and I feel like I'm a little bit obligated to show these simple things first, just because I want to make sure that I can point people back to older videos that I have, or other videos in general, showing more simple soldering practices, so that when I move on to the more complex things and the more difficult things, I can give them a good basis to really work on their craft, work on their technique, and make sure that they develop good habits and get rid of bad ones. Say battery replacement is pretty much the easiest thing that you can do known to man soldering wise, uh, provided that you have the right tools. I just want to move on to more complex things, make new more complex tutorials, and just show how to do all sorts of different stuff, while at the same time making sure I don't leave too many stones unturned behind me. So anyways, that about wraps it up for this video. So go ahead and hit like if you like this video and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the future. As always, you guys stay awesome and I'll see you in my next video.